have a couple of news updates before we get back into the tunes. A tragic car accident took the life of Ken Forrestal last night. It was reported that he lost control of his vehicle on Virginia Avenue and crashed into a telephone pole. Friends who were with him earlier that night said he had been drinking very heavily and they were unaware that he was planning on driving himself home. Well, he now joins the ranks of the undead. We now return to Shakespeare in the Park, brought to you by Iris Corp Imitation Flesh. We dare you to taste the difference. Today's production, the comedy classic, Much Ado About Nothing, presented by the Royal Undead Theatre Company. Did you hear what happened last night? About Forrestal? Yeah, isn't that crazy? Just yesterday I was talking to the guy. He's having trouble with the new software. I showed him some shortcuts he could take. <laughs> that was the last thing we talked about. Computer software. Yeah. I mean, it's not like we really knew the guy, but still. Yeah. Well, at least he gets a second chance. Is that what you call it? Yeah, that's what I always thought. You screw up in this life, you get to come back a second time and make up for it. I find great comfort in that. I didn't know Forrestal very well, but I heard some stories, and believe me, that guy liked to drink. I don't know. I'm still not sure what I think about it. Think about what? What do you mean? People coming back. Well, I think it's a miracle. I mean, <clears throat> you know, at first it was a little scary with all the violence and gore and such, but now that they've stopped the Hacking and eating people, it's like they're back to normal. Death isn't such a taboo subject anymore. It's like the new middle age. But it's not normal. I ran to my old best friend Dwayne the other day. He died a couple years back. I said, hey, it's great to see you. 
<laughs> he just stared. Like he didn't even know who I was. That's what they all do. They just exist. They're not human anymore. I don't like where this conversation is going. I'm just saying, haven't you ever felt like that? It's like I don't know how to act around them. Well, you shouldn't act any different. You know, you're just being closed-minded. They're just like you and me. They have all the same rights as we do. Legally, they have those rights. And you know what? Naturally, they have those rights. And you know what? I take pride in knowing that I'm a part of a society that can look past something as simple as age, race, gender, and living status. And frankly, I'm surprised it's taken us this long to get this far. I wouldn't want to come back like that. Second chance or not. You can think whatever you want, man. George? Hey. Hey, uh, did you get that memo? Nope. Forrestal? Oh, hey, George. How you doing? Come and take a seat. So, uh, you want some coffee? I'm fine. No, I'll have Joy brace on some coffee. No, it's all right. Trust me, you're gonna want to see Joy. My new secretary. I'm teaching her the ropes personally. Joy, uh, can you bring some coffee? Uh, Thanks, hon. So how are you doing, George? Fine. fine. Yeah, yeah. You seem a little, uh, seem a little confrontational. No. Is everything at home okay? Yeah, it's fine. It's, what am I yeah. in here for? Yeah, well, I don't know. You seem a little negative. You want to? Yeah, well, I come in this just morning. Go and I ahead, my desk. Go ahead and take a breath. Just, just breathe with me. Why is Forrest still sitting at my desk? <sighs> well, George, um, I'm afraid. Uh, I'm afraid we've had to let you go. But that isn't to say that you've been a very productive worker. I mean, and I appreciate that very much. See, there's been some changes to our workplace, and it's led to a few replacements, like your case. Uh, I, I don't understand. Changes? What do you mean? What does this have to do with my job? Well, like I said, it isn't really anything of a flaw in your part. You see, we, we need a more living, impaired individuals working at the center, or else we could have a serious lawsuit on our hands. You see, George... There are more and more recently deceased people entering the workplace each day. We have to make jobs available to them. But what about the ones who are still living? This isn't right, Phil. What do you want me to say? Affirmative action. It's out of my control. Dead or alive, forced all have the experience to move up anyway. I don't make the decisions around here, George. I just carry them out. Great. Forrestal dies and gets a promotion, and I get fired. Listen, I didn't ask for these dead sons of bitches to come back and take our work, but they did. And you know if I say anything about it, they'll throw my ass out of here faster than you can say Freddy Fender. It's not my fault they ran out of room in hell. See you around, Phil. So. Whoa! You okay there, George? Fine. Coffee's cold. 
Thank you, Joy. George, sorry, let me, um, I gotta turn my music down real quick. Oh, actually, have you heard this song before? It's, um, I show. well, I think I showed this to you in the car one morning, actually. It's from that one band I was telling you about, A Broken Paddle. Um, they're that really, like, really underground indie band that no one's ever heard of except for me. And, um, they're really good. You gotta listen to their stuff more often. It's like, it's like, you know, like, take, take some of your favorite bands and make them indie and have no one hear about them and it's this band. They're so awesome, hey, I'm telling you. Are you free for lunch? Um, yeah, I think so. Okay, meet me at Carpenters. Huh, something wrong? No, I just got fired. I agree that it doesn't seem right, but I can also see where they're coming from too. What? Well, everyone deserves an equal opportunity. I do feel bad for you, but people gotta make that kind of a sacrifice to make this a fair society. But you see, it's not evil. It's very unfair. Jobs should be handed out based on how decomposed your skin is. Careful what you say there, George. And it's not just their skin. It's their ability, too. They're slow, unresponsive, and practically lifeless. How is one of those things supposed to hold down my old job? I can't imagine picking up the phone and dealing with customer support with one of those things on the line. I don't even like being around them in person. It's like they're always tempted to start chewing on your arm. Oh, come on, don't say things like that. Not all undead are flesh eaters. There are brain eaters too. And besides, who cares what they eat? It's not like I say anything to you because I'm a vegetarian. I just keep that to myself. It's just not fair to judge people based on their culture. That's not really the point we're trying to make. They shouldn't be treated like this. They're too slow to even work at the DMV. Okay, I'm okay with you expressing your opinions, but don't stereotype like that, huh? It's like saying all white men can't jump. I know I'm not alone in this. You can't sit there and tell me that you don't feel uncomfortable when you stand next to one of them in line, or when they sit next to you on the bus. No, I have plenty of undead friends, and I act no differently around them than when I'm with you. I think you're just convincing yourself that's true. People act so different around them, and you know what? I'm sick of it. I'm gonna start being honest with myself and every zombie that I see out there. Don't say that word. Don't you realize we're in a public place? What's the matter with you? You're just really overreacting. And that's another thing. Why can't we say that word? Zombie. When did it become a slur? You know, I have the right mind to turn you in for saying things like that. It's a hate-filled word with a disgraceful past. Don't say it. It's the best word I can think of to describe those freaks. They're zombies. Damn zombies. You know, I don't care if you're angry, but I don't want to have anything to do with a dentist. I'm not a dentist. It's just zombie bullshit. You know what? Don't worry about picking me up for work anymore, because I'd rather walk than share a car with an ignorant son of a bitch like you. See you later, George. Oh my gosh, I'm so sorry, sir. I'm sure Sammy here didn't mean it. There was a time I could have had you shot for that.
It's a corporation dedicated to building research facilities for the re-education of the undead and making them productive members of our society. I wouldn't give one penny to those brainless, stupid, slobbering, slow-walking, rotting, disgusting piles of walking pus. Why, you, you ignorant, know-nothing, uneducated, living supremacist, discriminating, profiling, hate-filled bigot. <sighs> You're all so holier than thou. You're too afraid to speak out and say how you really feel. You know what? Keep acting like that. You're all equal. You're all zombies. You're no different than they are. Just coasting through life, acting like everything's alright. I'm finished with it. It's time to wake up. Wake up! Thank <laughs> you. 